Okay, so here we are with our iMac G3, and there's a cat under the camera. This is like the original model, but I'm thinking the CD-ROM drive does not work. So, I have a CD-ROM drive, and I also have a clock battery because it's dead. I know that for a fact. I already did the first step on plugging everything, but... Now the next step is to unscrew everything. We have one screw right here, and I've already taken it out, so I have it set off to the side. That's all that holds this whole back cover in. Then you just have to use a bit of effort to pull it off. Now this whole cover comes off. Next thing that we have is our whole motherboard unit, and there's the then that's the bottom of the motherboard unit there. We have it all right here, and there's a handle at the top. But there's two screws holding the handle in, so we have to take those out. I'm biding my time. Now that those are off, it could slide out, but we have to unplug all the cables. For a while, but I we just unplug everything. There's also, in this particular case, there's a screw right down here that secures in place this last cable on the bottom right. And now the screw fell down. It always falls down when I try and take it out, but that can come off and out. Now the next part is always just slightly tricky. You have to make sure all your cables stay off to the sides, and the whole motherboard unit just lifts straight up and out. And now you have the brains of the iMac in the palm of your hand. So now we got all the screws out, we got an empty iMac unit, I'm going to slide it off to the side. Because what matters right now is this. This is what matters. We have the motherboard, we have the video controller and the video RAM, under this grating, we also have the G3 chip itself with the memory daughter board, and that has 256 megabytes of RAM. I have the 233 megahertz iMac G3 model. Also, when you're on, looking on this side, we have the 10100 Ethernet, we have the 56K modem, we also have the two USB ports, of course, a microphone input, and a sound output as well. Our problem is the CD-ROM drive, and I got a replacement, an original replacement. Hopefully it works. This one just clicks clicks at me when I try and do stuff. So it's super simple to remove. It's simply held in place by a little spring, and you push it back, and it comes up and out. And you unplug it. Now we're done with this one. This one is manufactured July 1998, and the replacement drive is manufactured... October 1998. So it's slightly newer. So set that off to the side. This one already has the whole mounting bracket on and stuff. It's kind of harder to get back in because it's hard to see. Down in this area there's a small wire. Maybe you can hear that noise. And it attaches to that bracket down there. Hello kitty. So I need to get it to attach to that to this wire in order for it to stay in place and make it easy to um, depress the button on the front because when you go to try and push it it'll slide further into the iMac unit and if it's not attached to that piece of wire then it won't come back out at you and then it'll get wedged inside Cause you will want that bounce back. Next thing, we have it right here, is the clock battery. And that's also dead because once you unplug the iMac and plug it back in, it says there's a network time error and you need to reset your time. So this is just a tiny little purple battery. It's a one half size AA, I believe. And like you can see, it wasn't very hard to take it 
take it apart, there's just a plastic bezel on the top that comes off, and that's guarding the battery, and then you can pull the battery itself off. Uh, here's my replacement battery. Uh, po there is positive and negative symbols, so you just can put it right in there. It's really simple. And get it plugged in, and you put your bezel back on. That's back in place. Now we're ready to put the whole unit back into the iMac. Yeah, you in my shipping box? What'd you do? What if I turn it upside down with you stuck inside? Let's see you get out then. <laughs> so, here we are. Got the iMac set back up on the corner of my desk. Like I said, I have the original iMac G3. It only comes with a tray loading 24 times CD ROM drive, 24 times speed. This one also had the infrared port, and inside there is something called the mezzanine slot, which I'm not sure if it served any purpose whatsoever, but you can read up about it online. We also have our two stereo speakers and the two headphone ports on the front side to allow for easy listening of whatever multimedia type stuff you had. I also got the original USB keyboard. Unfortunately, it's kind of becoming frayed at the top. And I also got a an original colored mouse. It's not the hockey puck mouse in particular, but it serves the same exact purpose. And it's labeled as an Apple USB mouse. So, it's all plugged back in. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so now definitely we got to start up on, and the power light turned green. I had to turn it on, and then I tried resetting it, but then I just had to pull the power plug, unfortunately. There's our Happy Mac, that's for sure. And definitely, I think the CD-ROM drive will pop open now. It may or may not. <laughs> it came in, an, the Apple iMac came in, in its original color, which was called Bondi Blue. I say Bondi, you say Bondi. Whatever you want to say. But this original color was called such. It also came with a roughly 15-inch diagonal CRT screen with a maximum resolution of 1024 by 768, and this one is in great condition. It originally only came with 32 megabytes of RAM and a 4 gigabyte hard disk. This particular model has 256 megabytes of RAM right now, but it still has the original 4 gigabyte uh, hard disk. So now we're on the desktop. I have no disk drive. Oh my goodness. Something tells me I didn't plug it in. I'll have to review the footage. But for now, I think that I'm going to have to turn it off and open it up again. Gosh, I'm so stupid. Otherwise, we just got our network time error. And that'll definitely be fixable. And the time has changed. And we shall... shut down the computer. I'll be right back with the results in a short amount of time. Here we are again. And yes... I did not plug in the CD-ROM drive after I put it in place. Pretty stupid of me, but we're going to start up. Now I just saw a light on the CD-ROM. I'm sure you probably saw it yourself. It's kind of difficult to see, actually. And of course it pops open on its own right away. Now these original Apple iMacs actually shipped with OS 8.6. This one in particular has Mac OS 9.1. My keyboard, it's got dust in it. Now we should definitely have 
a CD-ROM drive. And this time, it has the correct date still. Monday, 1.57 p.m. Now, down. Yep, we have an Autopy CD-ROM. ATAPI CD-ROM. So I'm going to pop it open. This is the moment of truth. Play some classical music. J.S. Bach, two part inventions. Let's see what happens right here. It'll eat, the last one I had said that the disc is unreadable and asked me if I wanted to format it. But obviously you can't format it if it isn't doing anything. Well, this time, yeah, we got an audio CD, that's for sure. I'm going to click play. There we go. And it doesn't even sound that good through this. There you have it. Working CD-ROM drive, new clock battery, it's all good.